I have thousands of notes ranging in size, priority, and status, and it's kind of an organized mess inside of my system. Some ideas and thoughts that I took almost a year ago now are still in my system, but I haven't looked at them for, like, months. And then there are other large projects that I've been working on recently in the last couple of weeks that have far more work that I've done to them. There are lots of small things I've done inside of my workflow to help me manage these different types of notes, these different sizes of notes, and in this video I want to go through what I've learned along the way. Tags, folders, and any other overarching categorization that uses hierarchies are good for statuses and stages of notes, but not for actually searching for something. Let me explain. When I'm searching for an idea, a topic, a concept to add something to, to take something away, or to actually work on the thing, I want to easily be able to find everything related to those notes, to those ideas, to those thoughts. If I have a learning folder, I'm going to have thousands of notes in there, and I'm going to have to try and navigate my way through them all, which is just a pain. And the same result happens if I have a tag relating to all of the learning-related notes. I hear you. Use subfolders, use subtags. Well, the same problem happens with added issues. I still have a long list of notes that I need to sift through to try and find the points that are relevant to what it is that I'm working on at the time, but it also causes a friction point when I'm trying to organize where the note goes. Like, do I add all of the tags on something and then I have like 50 tags for one note, or do I put it in one folder but not that folder and then I have to work out which folder they go in? It's just, it's annoying. And even if I do find the right note through the tags or through the folders, I then need to understand why it's actually there, like what was the point of it being tagged with learning, because it might not have been the entire note relating to learning or the, the motivation or the intrinsic motivation of that learning student or learning environment. I, I don't know. So I would have to read through the entire note to find the point that I'm actually looking for. So I use folders to store notes, and it gives them a status. If they're not in a folder, then I need to process them. If they are in a folder, then I've processed them at least once. Tags, on the other hand, are a little bit more dynamic because you can have multiple tags on one note. So I use them as statuses, whether it's active, whether it's to-do, or what stage the note is in, whether I've written it, I'm writing it, or I'm waiting on it. So when it comes to finding a note, or finding an idea or concept, I can use search, and the different types of search that you get inside of Obsidian. I know search works different ways in different tools, and Obsidian is fairly unique in the way it uses search as a separate feature, so searching for words, terms, blocks, and concepts are all in one search, and then the page names are in the quick switcher. Then you have the tag search, which is a pain on its own, and then you have the other search features that you can use in the backlinks, or the outgoing links, or the graph links, there's loads of different types of searches. But I see this as an advantage to Obsidian because I have modular search rather than just this big global search of everything and dump it all in one. I can see specifically what I'm looking for. So if I'm looking for a page, I can go to the quick switcher. If I'm looking for a block, I can go to the normal search. If I'm looking for something in a backlink, I can then filter the backlink panel through search. But I found the search results more useful when I was actually distilling the notes I had. So instead of having lots of atomic small notes, I actually had bigger, much larger lists of notes. And this is another one of the lessons I've learned, is instead of thinking about a concept or a topic as a note, I think about points that are related to the concept or topic. So a note is a list of points, and the points can be related to multiple notes. Inside my original captures of videos, podcasts, blogs, articles, everything that I consume, I have different points, essentially bullet points, and those points are taken to the notes appropriate, so maybe a point is duplicated in two or three notes because it's related to different concepts. What this means is when I'm going through search and I search for a result, I'm going to get all the related ideas from all the related sources and references that I have all in one place. This then makes the distillation process and creation process of thoughts, ideas, and, and consolidating ideas together much, much easier because all the points are in one place. If I have four definitions for one word, I can just put them together into one block for referencing later on. If I have differing opinions or different perspectives or maybe critiques of certain ideas, I can put them all into one page so I can say this is an argument for and this is an argument against. And this is taking an academic approach to my notes because I'm looking for synthesis, i.e. lots of things that say the same thing, and critique, i.e. things that critique whatever the idea is, and I'm putting it into one note. One article or essay, maybe. The difference in my notes is the article or essay isn't finished, it's never finished, it's ongoing, so anytime a new critique or a new synthesis or a new idea, new concept or anything comes into that world, I can just add it into the note. And this is another one of the aha moments I had with my notes, is my source notes are fairly static. They are, this is what comes from that source, and it's not really going to change unless I go to the source again. However, my notes are dynamic. They are constantly evolving. They are never finished. 
It sounds really obvious to say, but when you finish an article or you've written up all of your points about something, what I had in my mind was I don't need to add something to that now. But I do. If something new comes up, I actually want to add it to the page. So I may have a written article that I've finished. I've gone through hundreds and hundreds of references, but then I see a new piece, a new article, a new piece of information, and I put it in the to-do section because it may actually contradict what's going on. And that is where ideas, science just in general, moves forwards. It's challenging old ideas and relearning information. But then I got to a point where I had these massive long notes of loads and loads of points and as I'm distilling them down they're still pretty big and large and I don't really know how to navigate through them all, they're just so much stuff in one place. How do I make sense of this? And again, looking back into history and what's been done and what works is just academics. They have an abstract at the top, i.e. a synopsis, and then they have all of the different sections going down the page through the article. But because Obsidian is more advanced than just articles, because there is the ability to dynamically link through things, I have a synopsis at the top, but the synopsis actually allows me to see all of the other points going on. So essentially, I get a two, three thousand page word explanation in two or three sentences at the top of each note. And if I want to go deeper in any of those points, I can then go to the synopsis at the top of the section. So it doesn't matter how deep I want to go, if I've done the research, then the answers will be there. Which is when another one of the aha moments happened inside of Obsidian specifically and using block references. Because there are some ideas that are moved across pages, they're all over the place. Which is what I said about the points and being able to link them in different ideas. But a depth of understanding around a topic or concept may only live in one place. So neuroimaging for example is around approaches to human cognition. But it could be referenced elsewhere. So RTMS or TMS are related to studies around neuroscience, which of course could lead to loads of different other things, but these other things don't need the full depth of what RTMS and TMS is, unless you really need to understand it, which is where the block references come in handy. So now I have a dynamic evolving note with a synopsis at the top, linking to other synopsis further down the page with greater depth, linking to other related concepts and topics, again expanding on depth with explorable examples, all being summarized in one application with references that are static that I can use, which can relate to other research, other related ideas, and bring all of those concepts and topics together inside of one homepage. So I can start anywhere I want, and I could end up literally anywhere inside of my my notes from one starting point, one idea, one concept, one thought. And the biggest advantage of actually writing my notes like this or articles like this is it doesn't assume prior knowledge. If I know nothing about the topic or concept in a, a year's time when I'm looking back at the thing, I can go down the note and find out what that is and refresh my memory and then understand the topic. But if it's something top of mind or something I've explored in greater depth, I can skip over all of that basic information and just look at what exactly it is that I need to look at. And for those of you that want to read through any of the notes, any of the stories, any of the information that I'm sharing through my notes, notes, again, it doesn't assume prior knowledge, it doesn't say, oh, you don't know this, so you need to go through this step first, it just goes through exactly what the topic is, and if you want to go further, you can explore.